Chapter 6 Red Riders Turi stood up and took one last look at the peaceful face of the Black Knight with the white shield, before turning around and walking slowly back to his horse. Now he had to carry out the task that the knight had given him, and deliver the letter to King Unuin in the land to the west of the Great Mountains. He stopped beside the horse and considered his course of action. He could not return to the city of Dagonoth because that would take too long. He would also have to explain what had happened and that would not be possible, as his mission had to remain a secret. And yet, somehow, he had to send a message to the city, to his parents, so that they would not be worried and go in search of him. He also had to ensure that the knight with the white shield had a decent burial, and that everyone knew who had murdered him. The best thing I can do, he thought, is to ride back to the inn. I can tell the innkeeper that the knight with the white shield is dead, and ask him to send word to the, to the city. And soon he was on his way, feeling a lot older and more serious than he had just a short time before. After a while, he heard someone approaching, and a man on a horseback, a, a man on horseback appeared, traveling towards him. He was equipped for battle, with helmet and chainmail, lance and sword. His tabard, shield, and the feathers on his helmet were as red as blood. One of the red riders thought to rain. He remembered then that he was unarmed. Even so, he rode on calmly and acted as though everything was normal. The Red Rider moved aside to let Turi pass. Turi rode by, his heart pounding, and as he came alongside the horseman, the man spoke. Oh, friend, he said, what are you doing out so early in the forest? Where did you come from, and where are you bound? That is my concern, Turi answered briskly. I bid you good morning. Turi rode on, expecting to feel a weapon at his back at any moment. However, nothing happened. He breathed out again, but dared not look around or quicken his pace. Then he heard the man shout something, but he could not make out what it was. Turi looked back to see that a second Red Rider had joined the first. Both men were looking at him. One of, one of them gave a shout. Turi heard an answer, far away. He was growing uneasy, and he made his horse go faster. Soon he realized that the Red Riders were following him. He urged his tired horse to go even faster, and as he knew, the inn could not be far. But then another Red Rider appeared on his right and barked at him to stop. Before Turi could respond, a fourth horseman came up on the other side, and Turi had to pull hard on his horse's reins to avoid him. Turi knew that Turi knew he was going to have to make a run for it. Suddenly, the entire forest seemed to be full of red riders, and they were all after him. They chased Turi, yelling at him to stop, but of course Turi did nothing of the kind. He swerved from the path and raced into the dense part of the forest in a desperate attempt to shake off his pursuers. Turi had no idea how long he raced onwards, uphill and downhill, plowing through brushes, or bushes and thorny undergrowth, with the shouts and yells following after him. He only knew that he didn't want to be murdered like the Black Knight with the, with the White Shield. After some time, he looked back and saw he had gained a lead, but he knew he could not keep it for long. His horse was tired, the forest was difficult to ride through, and there were so many pursuers. But then, he had a bright idea. He jumped off the horse and slapped its hindquarters. As the horse ran off one way, Turi raced in the opposite direction, and, sh and shinned up shined up a tree as fast as he could. He sat high up in the branches, safely hidden among the leaves, panting and trying to catch his breath as he waited to see what happened. A group of men rode past beneath the tree, but they did not notice him. Then he heard more shouts, but more voices were in the distance, so he dared not move into a more comfortable position. However, he still did not climb down the tree because he was scared that he might come back. Turi stayed up in the tree for a good while, but the Red Riders did not return. The forest seemed so calm and peaceful, and it was almost impossible to believe that the past few hours had been so eventful. Turi looked around and then carefully took out the letter so he could take a closer look. There was nothing remarkable about the letter. It was small, white, and flat. There were no words written on the outside. He studied the three seals. Each had a crown on it. 
but there was nothing else to indicate the importance of the letter. As he tucked it away again, he realized that it might it must be around seven o'clock. He leant back against the trunk and closed his eyes. Dagonaut's knights must be blowing their horns outside the chapel door right at this very moment, he thought. And Armand, Foldo, Wilmo, and Giuseppo are standing up and going over to open the door. He pictured the knights standing outside the chapel and heard them say, Good morning. King Dagonaut requires your presence. Take up your swords and your shields and come with us. He tried to imagine what would happen after that, but his thoughts wandered. The next image that came into his mind was the black knight with the white shield saying to him, You have only to serve you have only to serve as my messenger. Turi opened his eyes. The chapel seemed so far away and the vigil so long ago. He had it had nothing to do with him now. He looked down. It must be safe now, he thought. He climbed down the tree and cautiously made his way through the forest, glancing around at every unexpected sound. Soon he had a pleasant surprise. He came across his horse, quietly grazing. Good horse, he said, climbing onto its back. Let's head back to the inn and we can eat and you can eat your fill. Then he he gasped as he remembered that the horse did not belong to him. He had to return it to its owner somehow. Turi started riding and, before long, without any further adventures, he arrived back at the inn. 